Eita. Yeah. How is it? Fine, yes, you're breaking yeah, up. No, you are breaking up a little bit. I'm not breaking up. Yes, how are you? I'm fine, Carlo. Yes, um, did you get the number? Any good news? Any good news? No, no good news. Why? The, 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 the thing is, um, something came up. So you didn't go? So, so then, therefore, uh, I postponed it until tomorrow. Okay, I'll call okay. you whenever. Okay. Okay. All right, Carlo. Okay, sure, bye. Yeah. Um, I don't mind them being over here. Take like this bread. This is my body. There's some kind of Greeky kind of Mediterranean. Um, three years ago, I was sitting with you, Dumina and Ninos, and I think Dumina was still working for Y magazine. Right. And I was going to Geneva for, to a film festival. And we were sitting, like, I remember it's a beautiful day. It may not remember it's a cold day. But I remember it's a beautiful day sitting at Ninos. And I saw this beautiful woman passing, walking past. And, um, and like a very weak man and a very shallow man, I looked at her. And, and the next thing I remember, we were just outside Postnet, just next to Ninos. And I was chatting her up. So I took her number and I thought to myself, what a beautiful woman. I grew up surrounded by women, um, by women that I really, really loved, um, by women who really, really took care of me, who really, really were sensitive, who let me do lots and lots of mistakes, and, and, and I would get off very, very lightly, you know? And, and I think today, when I get involved in relationships and I don't find that, I get disappointed and I just walk away, you know? And it's as easy as that, you know? Um, that the more sensitive and gentle people are in, today, um, the chance of me staying are greater. So I took a number with no sort of intention of, you know, I'll keep in touch or anything else. And I remember when I met her, and Itu Milan was there, and he can sort of add on things. She had, um, you know, there's one of those modeling portfolios where you've got your pictures and stuff, and mm. I remember looking at them and stuff like that. And Tumi can add on some stuff if you remember that moment. <laughs> no. She, a she didn't have a point. <laughs> 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 right, did you think okay. she was beautiful? I thought she was sexy. Okay. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You said something, you remembered something. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm gone. No, 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 we, we, no, we haven't gone far. <laughs> okay, can I tell you this? So anyway, you know what it is. You know, you know how color is. He looks at you, he looks at the woman, mm. he looks back at you, he looks, and at this point she's looking at you, she knows that he wants to go up to her, and he looks at you and looks at her, he looks at you and looks at her, and he finally goes up to her and he's got this big grin mm. on his face in the meantime. That's all I remember. I mean, I, when I was frightened of girls, I didn't have the courage to talk to girls. And I would run away sometimes when the girls tried to talk to me. I went to school, I studied, went back home and stayed in the doors and we talked about family issues because we were so tight as a family also, you know. Um, went to town, you know, um, did all sorts of things, but I was never allowed to be loose and to be, you know, I was never out. The street never interested me. I was always intimidated by the street. You know, because once I was outside, there was a sense of protection in the family. You know, and once I was inside, I felt so protected. And once I stepped outside, I had to deal with all sorts of issues, you know. So I left and um, saw so the festival. Um, and, and I came back and I was going through, you know, sometimes I keep like papers. I write people's numbers and I just keep papers. And sometimes I try to write ideas for films which never get made. Sometimes I write boy, bad poetry, you know, like three or four lines, uh, you know. Um, and, and those things, I just keep and throw them into like a plastic or something. 
I mean, I woke up in the morning on Saturdays in boarding school and see everyone washing their clothes and just guys hanging out there talking about girls. And I'll be with my books, you know, my, especially my history books. And, and everyone will be looking at me and say, this stupid Carlo, you know, always carrying books. Okay. So anyway, as I, was going, as I was going through the papers or whatever, the number, I saw the paper with the number. I was going like, oh. Nino's. <laughs> Post modeling portfolio. That is this movie. Bay. On a beautiful bad day. So I he said babe. So I called him. And when I called him, I said, Oh, you remember me? He said, Oh, I, I, I never thought you'd call me and stuff like that. I said, No. She remembered you. Yes, Yo. she did. Oh. Then, and she was like very nice. And I was like, Oh, when are we going to see each other and stuff like that? And I then remember that we had a, a date, a first date at Tivoli. I don't know why. She, I think she wanted past or something. I used to be afraid to give girls my phone number. Because if they called, my mother would pick her up and say, um, I'm the only woman allowed to talk to Carlo. I remember someone, this girl, <laughs> in the classroom, she really liked me very much. And she sent me a Valentine's card, which is the only card I ever got in my life, Valent Valentine's card. And it was very, very sweet. You know, you're such a nice guy, I love you, and everything else. And I remember I didn't wash the dishes one day, and I'd left on Saturday, and came back in the afternoon. And this card, was on, in my bedroom, it was there all the time. And you know, my mother did the most horrible thing ever. She took her lip lipstick and wrote on top of that card, like, remember to wash your dishes. I cried the whole day, <laughs> you know, literally cried. You know, sometimes for some strange reason, you're attracted to someone. And the whole night, you're not even interested in what they're saying to you or what you're saying to them. <laughs> Just looking at them and, and <laughs> you're thinking other things. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Carlo. Yes. <laughs> and this this happened to me. This happened to me where, where it's not, it's not really. You're thinking other things. Yes. Yeah. And you weren't listening fine. to what you were saying. And you know, I mean, she's, she's not, she wasn't even a rocket scientist, so it's fine. You know, she wasn't like the kind of. Oh, yeah. No, it's not bad we what I'm saying. We heard that part true. already. Yeah because it was, it, it was a traditionally very male sort of patriarchal society. And, and, and it was hard because I wasn't, I couldn't fit within the Boy Scout kind of thing. You know, even today I still find it like absolute nonsense that because I'm a man, therefore I have to behave in a certain way. Um, and even then, I mean, I used to get humiliated uh, as a boy because, you know, my grandfather used to say, boy, stop running after your grandmother, you know? You know, because when my, father, my mother went to the kitchen, I'd follow her, when she went wherever, I'd follow her and stuff like that. <laughs> so years later, and I lived with my grandfather for three years at one stage, and it was only the two of us, and it was hard because just simply because he wanted to me to be a man. And he was a very, very, very good man, and he is a very, very good man, you know. Um, he has a very strong sense of responsibility and love. But also he grew up in, you know, you grew up in a village where he went to an initiation school. It's, he went to the mountains to become a man, you know, for circumcision school. And there were all sorts of rituals around being a man, you know, or becoming a man. And, and I sort of like, no. I'm not interested. So anyway, so what happened is, is, is that um, then the first night I said, oh, you know, I can sleep at my place. And stuff the like first that. night? <laughs> yes. No, what did she say? <laughs> but he's like that. <laughs> no, and, and, I know and, him and like that. He's from Venturicu. You can sleep at my place. You can't just do that. <laughs> That's you. So we are embarrassing you. <laughs> so what say I can say what I like. <laughs> and I think one of the most difficult things about childhood being a young male is the fact that you're being asked to be a man. You're being asked to act like someone who one day is going to be a man, someone who one day is going to be the provider. And there's enormous pressure in terms of the way you're brought up. When we were primary, and um, as young boys, little boys, and they were older boys, you know, sometimes five years older than us, 
you know, sometimes they will line us up and, you know, you have to open your zip or they open the zip and they used to look at your wheelie and sometimes just like touch it, you know. And it humiliated me, absolutely. I felt it was disgusting. <laughs> what did she say? I said, you can sleep at my place, there's no harm, you know. And she said, and I meant it, really. I know, and she slept, of course. She and then she, said to them, she said to me, no, I have to get home. I said, so you don't want to sleep at my place? She said, no, I don't want to, I want to go home. And then I said, okay. So I called my friend Lee. I said, my friend Lee, can you drive with me? <laughs> so we drove them here at around 11 o'clock. We drove into Soweto and yeah. dropped her home. <laughs> but you know what the thing is? The thing is, I've always been, despite what I say about men and despite what I say about us being boys, I've always bonded with men better than I bond with women, even today. You know, and when I was even younger, I mean, I used to be like with the boys and we would laugh and do everything else and stuff. And I remember all the boys would be smoking and drinking and I wouldn't, you know. But I, I was there, you know. And sometimes you would lie and stuff like that. And, and boys would ask you, have you ever slept with someone? You say, yes, you know, and you know, you didn't. You know, and they would laugh because they sort of perhaps knew that you were lying. But anyway, you'd say, yeah, I did. I called, it was like late on, I said to her, oh, you know what, um, let's go to a movie. And she said, okay. I said, but you know, afterwards you just stay at my place because there's no way to get home. <laughs> <laughs> so then she said, fine. Why didn't you go to AA too? So how long was that? She said, fine. <laughs> I want to that is that you go to Because he's seen because... Because... <laughs> enter the dragon many times. They <laughs> 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 wanted to see Costa Rica. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she said to me, she said to me, uh, Carlo, I can only sleep at your place if I have something to wear tomorrow. Because, you know, she used to dress nicely. You know, this is my version. She used to really like dressing nicely. And I like that. I can be very, very empty sometimes, you know? Um, where I just ha want to hang out with a woman because she's simply beautiful. Nothing else. You know? I suffer from that, you know? despite the fact that I'm really attracted to women who are intelligent, that I can talk to and stuff like that. At times, I just can't help it. You know, it's one of my biggest flaws. So I gave her the cash, mm. and then she went to buy whatever. She showed you to really me. Went I said, to it's get beautiful. Like... It was really beautiful what she bought. So what happened is we went to the movies. I said to her, no, let's watch something in Rosemary. She was like, no, subtitles, I don't know what's that. <laughs> then I said, OK. She said, but you promised the movies. So I said, OK, fine. <laughs> so we went to the center. I said, choose the movie. I tried to be a gentleman. And I said, choose whatever you want. She said, tell me what you like. I said, no, 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 you go, you choose. And she chose species too. My God, I didn't. <laughs> 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 so I said to her, "You don't mind if I sleep on your shoulder because she says I do whatever you want to do." So I slept on her shoulder. Oh, oh, and then she watched the movie, but not even once did she say, "Ah, oh, are you fine?" I was a little bit offended by the part. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't say that. I was with her. Had her back later. <laughs> you know, she never said anything. Afterwards, she goes like, "What a good film." Come on. And I was like, "No, it's, it's such crap." She said, "I don't care." Mm. You know, but I liked it. So I decided, no, let's, you know, I shouldn't fight. Let's go with the mask of yeah, the Yes, I said, I said, no, let me not fight. So um, keep my eyes on the prize. <laughs> you know, there, there used to be funny moments because my mother used to go to work in the evening sometimes. Sometimes she would come back in the morning and the funny part is that my friends used to bring girls over to my place because their parents were there. And I would hear them having sex with them. And I would do nothing. Sometimes they would bring me a girl and I would be with her in bed, but I would be terrified to touch it. And also I think to a certain level it has always been a sense of rejection. That I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid if I touched her and she said no, that would hurt me. So I never used to do anything. We went back home. We went back to my place, so there was no discussion. So we got in there, and you know what? She was just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sleep. So we got into the room. She just undressed. It was absolutely thing. She had no. What was the in, right English word? You know, my English has kicked. No, wasn't she special. Had no before, yeah, or... she had no inhibition. Okay. She just yeah, took off no the thing. She just took off her dress and said, "I'm sleeping." You know. Okay. And I thought, oh, this is amazing. And she took off her bra and she just, you know. 
Yeah. She got, I got into bed with her and I, I touched kiss her. She said no. And then I well, gave me a kiss her and she turned around and said, I'm sleeping. Pocket, but I mean, the, and and of her. course, I, I persisted a little bit, tried to kiss her neck. And she said, no, stop it. And then the only thing that I came close to doing was just rubbing in a nipple. And that Just one thing. nipple. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then she said to me, then she said to me, Carlo, it, it feels very nice, but I have to sleep. Ah! Yeah. 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 Then, 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 uh, and then I thought, let, I thought, let me play the gentleman, you know? Uh, so, uh, so I slept, you know? I, I think I tried to once or twice more. She said, no, stop it. And I realized that, no. This okay, you realize that N-O okay. spells. Yeah. And I just thought, no, nah, man, I have to sort of lose my vision. I don't know what was driving me, just funny story. I was just like, I have to lose my virginity when I was 21. All the boys that I know, all my friends have lost their virginity a long time ago. And I don't, I don't care whether it made sense or not. At that moment, for me, the only thing I wanted to do was to lose my virginity. And you know what's the funny thing is that moment is that I, I used to be involved in like, you know, I used to be involved with girls and I would kiss them and whatever, but nothing, you know? And, and there was a whole thing of like, you have to penetrate. Of course, after that night, then she, she left, and then I kept on seeing her. But I kept on, she kept on saying, "No, in the evenings I can't make it." And we kept on meeting at this Italian restaurant during the day lunchtime. Mm. So anyway, what happened is, is that then she tells me, "Oh, you know, I've got this boyfriend that I've been seeing for years. We are almost like, you know, we've lived together." And yeah. she, was, she was still staying with her parents in Soweto, mm. but she says she spends all the time with the boyfriend. And they've, they've got a baby together. Oh, yes. it's like that. Well, it's like a ah, this is like a, this is this is really after a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those really? key rings. Yeah. Yeah. She takes it out with the baby. She says, "Isn't she pretty?" Yeah. <laughs> and then I just said, "Oh, she's a pretty." I said, "Oh, she's, such a, she's, she's so beautiful." Yeah. But also, what can you say? I mean, you know. Yeah. What was, what was, the, what was the other option? I remember, but I was a little bit disturbed about the baby after ten. Oh, I was like, oh, oh she's got a baby. A baby. I was like, oh, she's got a baby. No, this is what came to my mind. No, no. I was like, oh, she's got a baby. I was disappointed. Generally, there's a whole thing of like how women should be and how women should behave. Okay, and and I've seen that with my aunts. I've seen that in the village to a large extent where women have a sense of preservation, where they, they're not supposed to be loose. You know, I think that's the way that they use, loose. I think that's why when girls are young, I've seen my grandmother goes like, even when they're four years old and they're not even aware, at least in my eyes, of their own sexuality, my, my grandmother used to go like, you know, cross your, <laughs> cross your legs, you know? You know? Um, because women are supposed to behave in a particular way. But we live in a society that will always have rules and will always have stereotypes and will always have conditions for black people, for white people, for women, for children, for rural people, for urban people. And those perceptions still, at a large extent, influence the way we interact. <laughs> Let me finish the story. Please, please, please. Okay. Comrades. Okay. Point of order. We're here. We're here. We're with you. We're with you. Anyway, so she said that eventually I was getting frustrated. Mm. And I was like, no, I'm walking away. She's not giving me any. Mm. <laughs> no She's not even allowing me to kiss her. Mm. She was very really strict. I kept on saying to her, and I kept on saying to her, if you, I don't, I don't mind, but tell me why. Mm. She was, she wasn't telling me anything, and I was getting very frustrated and annoyed. So I did what I usually do. I raised mm. my air number. Mm. Okay, because it's from a, the cell phone. It's a famous two million and Carlo trick. <laughs> I mean, when I think about the village, I think emptiness. I think space. You know, it's a place where nothing happens, and if it happens, it feels like it feels like your life is the same every day. It feels like you're not going anywhere. You know, it feels like you're getting old and yet the landscape and everything else remain the same. And I think you have to be strong to be able to sort of survive in that kind of area, you know, where everything is the same every day and everything is the same every day. 
and nothing changes. And the people get older, young kids get born, people die, and yet everything is the same. And, and, and after a while, and, and this is after a while, I sort of forgot about it for a while. And, mm. and, um, and, and I was doing Young Lions, mm. and I was busy, I remember when they was busy watching the footage or something like that. Mm. And as I'm watching the phone rings, and this woman goes like, hello, Carlo. Mm. I'm like, oh, it's you. Mm. She says, why mm. haven't you been calling? I say, no, I've been busy and all those kind of stuff. Mm. You know, and, and she says, yeah, we, sh we are really, really, we have to meet. There's mm. something I want to tell you. I stood her up and then um, she called me again the phone and she says, oh, you know, I was waiting for you and you didn't come. I said, oh, I'm very sorry, I forgot. Then she said, let's make another appointment. We made another appointment, I stood her up. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Then she said to me, she called me afterwards, she said, I've been waiting for you for more than an hour. So I said, I'm busy, I'm really hectic and stuff. And I was really hectic. And then, and then she said to me, now because I have to, now that you have, um, um, you don't pitch up when I say we should meet, I have to tell you that I really love you very much and I've always loved you. I think you're a great guy. Yeah. And I was like, in my heart, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then, she, so then, she, then she said, the reason why I didn't sleep with you is because I'm dying. I'm HIV positive. Yeah. 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 How do you respond to someone saying, I'm dying, especially using that word? What do you say? Do you say thank you for being so nice to me? Do you say, now I understand? No. I kept quiet. But the funny thing is I kept on saying, but my gosh, she's so beautiful. That's messed up, I think, kind of perception. Now as I look at it. But yeah, I was... <laughs> I went quiet. I didn't tell friends of mine until very, very late on. I didn't at all. I kept quiet. You know, one of the things that I think made me not meet her was the fact that I was so frightened. Because when people think HIV AIDS, they think death. And I kept on thinking death, death, and death. It's terrible, but that's what I thought. And I kept on postponing, I'll call it, I'll call it, I'll call it. I didn't do it. I mean, for me, that's the biggest thing, is that I should have just said to her, you know, I can't see you and I'm very sorry. But I think once you promise this, I'll call you and we'll meet and stuff like that. He should do that. He should. She's no longer staying there. Yes. They didn't give you a number, nothing. She's now married. She's now married? Yes. I talked to, to his father. I just, left, I just left his father right now. But then, didn't the father give you a number? No, the, his father said, no, <clears throat> she's married now. I, you know, no, all those things. Because I was not even sure about the name, but I said, she's not, it's not <laughs> So she's married now? She is. Now, where is... Hello? Are you listening to me? I'm listening to you, my <laughs> So she's married? She's, 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 she's married. 